Today, we're talking about developing your English speaking skills. So, let's go. I'm Deirdre Nicholas from Palm Tree Teaching TV, teacher, speaker, and your personal English language coach. Now, whether you're an English learner or an English teacher, I bet that one of the things that you would most like to be good at is speaking. If you're a teacher, you'd like some refreshing ideas on how to get your students to talk more English in class and how to teach speaking effectively. And if you're a learner, you want some activities that are fun and that you can easily do at home, either on your own or with a friend or with a small group of friends to really supercharge your English, don't you? So much better than studying a grammar book and so much better for your speaking skills too. So, in this video, I'm going to share with you some activities that will really improve your English communication. To provide opportunities to practice language in social contexts. To use English to express yourself or get your students to express themselves. And to improve speech sounds, rhythm, pronunciation and intonation. As well as developing all the vocabulary you need for real life situations. Of course, the best way to improve your speaking skills is to get lots of listening and speaking practice, which is exactly what you'll get with these activities. Now, for each of these activities, I'm going to show you how to do them as a learner at home easily and also as a teacher with your class. So here's the first one, playing cards. Surprised? How can playing cards be used as a language tool? Very easily. So at home, you just need one friend or up to three friends, of course, to do this. Pre-select a different topic for each suit of cards. So for example, it could be diamonds for travel, hearts for relationships and family, spades for a memory, and clubs for money and jobs. Of course, you can pick whatever topic you want. Get a pack of cards and get each person to choose a card. Now, depending on what suit the person has chosen, they should write down four or five questions about that topic. Now, don't allow them to prepare questions that could be answered with yes or no, just because that won't actually get the conversations going. What they need to do is to prepare WH questions and how, who, what, where, when, because that will really open up the answers. Then each person asks their questions that they've prepared to the others, really gets the conversations going. In class, it's done in the same way, but put your students into groups of four and each group has to pick a card. When the students start to ask the questions, mix up the groups. Okay, so number two, my second activity to develop your English speaking skills is role plays and simulations. This is great at home or in class. In class, this is one of the best ways of getting your students to speak English and it's motivating as well. Students pretend that they're in varying different social contexts, depending on the theme of your lesson, of course. You, as the teacher, give information to each student. So who they are, what they do, um, how they feel, what they're thinking, that kind of thing. So, for example, you can tell a student, OK, you are John, you have a stomachache. You go to the doctor and you tell him how you feel and what happened and so on. Now, if you have a large class, you could get a small group to do a demonstration at the front of the class and it'd be like a theatre production. And then you can get all the other students to ask them questions. You can extend these role plays into simulations to make it even more fun. Now, this is where they bring in things to add to their role and make them more lifelike. Role plays and simulations are really fun for your students. It will help them to learn the vocabulary and remember it much better. At home, you can make this into a fun event as well. Perhaps for your children, you could have a whole themed children's party where they have to do role plays and simulations in English. Or you could invite your friends round for a dinner and get them to bring things along for a themed dinner. Make them act in a role throughout the whole dinner, all in English. Number three, English only days. 
Now, if you're an English learner, why not involve your family in learning English, particularly brothers and sisters, perhaps if they're learning English as well, or your parents or someone in the family, and create an English only day at home where no one can speak anything but English. You can do the same in class. Every time a student wants to ask a question, they have to do it in English. Number four, picture describing. Pictures can be very effective at stimulating speaking and in a fun way. There are loads of ways to do this in class. You could get your students to bring in pictures or photographs of something they're particularly interested in, like, for example, a computer game or a football game, and then they can tell their partner or a group all about it. You could mix the groups around and perhaps get a spokesperson from one group to share pictures with another group. Endless possibilities. But what about as a learner at home? Well, this is very easily done. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you'll know that I'm a great fan of talking to yourself. So, talk to yourself. What? Talk to me? Yes, talk to me. But what shall I say? Well, you could start by watching my videos Practice all the phrases and the sentences and the tongue twisters. That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to start right now. Particularly talking to yourself in the mirror and recording your spoken English as a way of improving. It really works. You can learn so much about your strengths and what you need to work on by listening to a recording of yourself. So at home, select a picture of something that you really like. Perhaps a photograph of your friends or a picture of a beautiful garden and then turn on the record button on your mobile phone and record what you say. Listen to yourself afterwards. You can learn a lot from that. Oh, so before I go on to the next activity to help you develop your speaking skills, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you don't miss any of my videos and lessons. And if you would like to have me as your personal English language coach, why not email me on the email below, deirdre at palmtreeteaching.com. I can really help you to improve your English speaking fluency. OK, number five, desert island activity. This is a fun activity for you and a couple of friends if you're an English learner, perhaps over a coffee or a lunch at the weekend. It's also great for teachers and can be done with large classes too, especially if you divide your class into groups. Give each person a piece of paper. Tell them to draw an object on it, anything. Then collect in the drawings from your students or your friends and then hand them out so the drawings go to different people. Then you set the scene. You and your friends or you and your class have been stranded on a desert island. Tell your students that the only thing they have is the object which is drawn on the paper that is given to them. Their task is to persuade the class or their group that to survive, the class needs that item. The winners are the ones which persuade the class that they need that item to survive on their desert island. You could have half the class as winners that way. Number six, who's telling the truth? Now, this is a variation on two truths and a lie, but it's more fun, gets more English practice in conversation, and it creates competition. Again, it's an activity that you can do with friends if you're a learner or in class. So you have each person write three facts about themselves that nobody else in the class knows on a piece of paper. Make sure each student puts their name on the top of the paper, then collect in the papers and select three students to come to the front of the room. Read aloud one of the facts that is true for one of the students. All three claim that that fact is theirs and the class has to proceed to ask questions to all three to find out which one is telling the truth and which one is lying. After a few minutes of questioning, the students guess who is telling the truth. You could do this as a competition in groups and offer little prizes as well. So I've got lots of videos which I've made to support you as an English learner and also lots that uh, support you as an English teacher as well. So do have a look at those. I've put some links below this video for you in the description. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this amazing channel. 
So enjoy your English and your English teaching and I will see you next time. Bye.